Uh, we will move to our uh, next speaker, uh, one of our uh, well-known local experts, Mr. Mohammed Al Asiri. Uh, Mohammed is the executive director of the National Center for Training, Evaluation, and Accreditation. Uh, Mr. Al Asiri uh, has more than 20 years of experience in government, private, and non-private sectors, where he has worked with education sectors through a number of international entities including Cisco Systems, Microsoft, Pearson Education, in addition to a number of local entities. His expertise uh, is focused in strategic transformation, in education sector, ch change management, strategic and operational management. Mr. Asiri worked during the last uh, nine years. Uh, Mr. Asiri worked during the last uh, nine years focused in training and skill issues and uh, bridging the gap between training sector and labor market. He's currently working on building an innovative model for the National Center for Training and Education and Accreditation in partnership with industries and the labor uh, uh, market. Mr. Asiri holds uh, a bachelor degree in management information system, King uh, Fahad University of Petroleum and Minerals. Uh, he will be talking today about uh, ATEC uh, evaluation and accreditation approach for the training sector in the Kingdom of Saudi uh, Arabia. Uh, um, Mohammed, the uh, floor is yours. Thank you, Your Excellency. And I am very honored, actually, to be speaking today um, in this um, very important uh, conference. For our international guests, please allow me. I'll be speaking in uh, Arabic, and uh, the, the translation, inshallah, will be uh, given to you. Assalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you all. May you all have a good evening today. I'm honored to be here in this conference among this, this elite on experts of training and education uh, from uh, the kingdom and from the international uh, realm. I'm going to speak about what we do in the ETEC evaluation accreditation approach in terms of the new ideas that we want to tackle and the ideas that were mentioned today also about by some of the international experts in order to know how do we how we work on these ideas and how we implement them in fact our arabic culture spoke a lot about the importance of work more than the importance of knowing uh, the knowledge itself. In our uh, Arab culture, we find that knowledge or is when it is accompanied with practice, it gives results. Also our Islamic culture and the culture that we inherited from our Arab uh, forefathers speak about the importance of work, the importance of practicing our knowledge. And we find that in a lot of uh, the sayings and the works, that we find in our Arab and Islamic culture. Uh, today, I'm uh, mentioning only one of these quotes, one of the Arab philosophers. A man who does not practice his knowledge is like a leafy tree that does not bear, bear fruit, which is uh, a quote by Abu Hayyan. Now, let's speak about what is going on in Saudi Arabia and around the world. After that, we're going to speak about the different points that I'm going to tackle. What we are doing, uh, about uh, this job in Saudi Arabia and in our EDEC in terms of developing the mechanisms and the methodologies of evaluation and accreditation in Saudi Arabia. As uh, their excellencies uh, mentioned before me, we are in a country that works in accordance with a vision, an ambitious vision led by uh, the Crown Prince. May Allah protect him in order to develop Saudi Arabia. Development in Saudi Arabia today is uh, usually accompanied with educational development and employment development. There are a lot of things that were mentioned about Saudi Vision 2030, but if we have a deeper look at it, we'll find that it focuses a lot on the impact, the transparency, as well as partnerships. Another point that I want to mention is that uh, also uh, in terms of all of these changes that we're mentioning in Saudi Arabia and the times that we are uh, facing now, in the whole world in terms of change. It is a huge change that we are seeing all over the world. This change that happened 
uh, by COVID-19 all over the world, a huge change. And if we look at the missing skills in the field of education that was impacting as well, the uh, TV, uh, the educational and vocational systems, it is a huge impact. Uh, there is a waste or a missing of like third of the year or maybe higher than that. So the impact will be huge and the students of, who are now in the grades between one and 12, they might expect 3% lower income for their entire life because of this impact for their entire life. As for the nations and the countries, they may lose maybe 1.5% of their annual GDP for the rest of the century. So the educational and training uh, waste or missing that happened has this profound impact. And given that technical and vocational training depends on uh, laboratories, on experience and hands-on training and the real training that was not available for uh, most of the uh, people during and after the crisis. Also the work markets are uh, hugely impacted during and after the crisis. Also another point is that we don't live in isolation. We are part of this world and in this world there are a number of stereotypes and patterns that are uh, known and common. Some of them are in front of you now that uh, impact us in Saudi Arabia directly. For, for example, the competency-based training that started to spread all over the world, this kind of training and education is uh, in which train, trainees look for not only the number of training, the number of hours of training, but the number of skills. And around the world, we will find, if we look, we'll find that there is a lot more focus on the skills and people are now looking at the skill as if they are looking at the certificate or maybe more important than the certificate. So the technical and vocational accreditation and evaluation if agencies should know how to depend on that uh, related to the skills. Another point is related to the apprenticeship. Apprenticeship as bad Patrick has mentioned a while ago, it is one of the most common patterns which is more in demand more than ever before as OECD uh, have clarified and other organizations around the world because TVDC and training in general around the world, if they're going to have a quick comeback, they need apprenticeships, apprenticeships. Apprenticeships are important for the recovery of this kind of training in order to uh, recover from the coronavirus uh, problems. Also, it is non-linear career paths that we're witnessing now. Previously, trainees would uh, study for a number of years, then go to the work market. Now, everything is overlapping and it's not linear anymore. Uh, employees are expected, uh, while on the job, uh, they are expected to receive training and to have training and to uplift their skills, to upscale themselves. And now they need to diversify their skills in order to avoid the, the volatility of the work markets and to acquire new experiences and more skills. This requires a good response and a, a huge response from the training uh, delivery services uh, all over the world and service deliverers. And this will be reflected on the accreditation, accreditation and evaluation agencies in order to develop new plans and redevelop their current plans in order to cope with this change in demand. Also in Saudi Arabia, there is another kind related to the Generation Z. Generation Z, which was born after, from 1995 to 2011. They are now the oldest one of them is 25 and the youngest is seven years old, maybe. And now given that we have 70% of our Saudi citizens are youth, this generation started becoming the generation who is controlling the work market and the workforce. This generation looks at training and education through a different uh, glances, uh, through a different glasses. So they are a generation that is more than capable of dealing with technology better than the generations before them. If we look at the flexible work or flexible 
and or freelancing Saudi Arabia through a Ministry of Labor and uh, Social Development have issued a number of rules and laws and regulations that will work on developing flexible working and freelancing in order to help people have a huge number of skills. These skills are not limited to something specific, but re related to different fields. People will be developed. And now we're speaking about uh, learning for all people, learning for adults, and upskilling the uh, skills of people. People need to have flexible work, flexible skills, and they need to have different alternatives and options. Also another thing related to the micro-credentials and the nano and micro-credentials are very important. And trainees are not now not sitting on the seats for long hours. Even employment agencies now require trainees before they finish their training and quicker than before, because now they have economic quick, rapid economic requirements, and they need trainees to be quickly available for the workplace or the work environment. So these current demand uh, puts pressure on the training agencies and the accreditation agencies as well. Through these changes, we wanted to work in order to develop our internal methodologies in addition to looking at the international global best practices and trends. The first part, which is a part that is uh, common between all of agencies around the world, industries and sector councils play an integral role in the development of standards, which is an integral part to the accreditation process in terms of building standards, as well as the actual participation in the accreditation and evaluation processes. Another point which is very important and uh, Mr. Williams has focused on in his speech when he spoke about the agencies who uh, are responsible that are responsible for inspections and accreditation uh, those who think that it is uh, not easy to be done as mr williams has mentioned it is a developmental process we need to have partnerships with the uh, training agencies in order to have accreditation and evaluation as a participatory process, not just an inspection process, so that it will achieve sustainability and achieve the goals of the uh, development goal that we acquire. Another thing that is very important is that governmental funding is, is related, closely related to, this, to the quality. So it is important for Saudi Arabia also to take care of that. And, the countries who provide this kind of support should have the right to uh, receive some kind of quality. And this level of quality should be available. Governmental funding can be an incentive towards quality. So what did we do? We looked at these different variables and different aspects, and we uh, took advantage of the period of the COVID-19 crisis to reconsider our uh, model in general. The model that we have or the system is as follows. First, we should tackle the standards and look the standards. We should review our standards. These standards, are they focusing on the inputs or the outputs? We found that our main focus was on the inputs and the processes, but the impact that needs to be done was to have more focus on the outputs, to have uh, more freedom for the agencies of training in order to reach the best impact with their own way, if they have other ways or better ways to uh, use. In other uh, sectors, they have diff different ways. Another thing that the training sector, because it's diversity, because of its diversity and other SMEs and big projects and medium uh, companies, they may need an accreditation, accreditation process that is uh, composed of more than one phase. So we have three phases of accreditation. The first one, is, as mentioned by Williams, a phase of self-assessment. This self-assessment phase is very important. In this phase, we made it composed of an electronic system. This electronic system uh, will be good. We will not bother the agencies. We will not annoy them. They will work 24 hours, 24-7. Uh, they can uh, do their self-assessment uh, around the clock. Also, there is an electronic society that will help the uh, officials of these quality agencies to have peer-to-peer -peer knowledge transfer in order to uh, have the maximum advantage. 
We don't intervene in any of their work. We don't interfere. We make this system available. We set the skills, make them ready. They can freely work and they can get over the fear of self-assessment. They can self-assess their own work and they can uh, tell us when they are ready for accreditation and evaluation. We use technology and we found that a lot of the automation can be done for the evaluation process and we benefited a lot, all praise due to Allah, because of this uh, journey that we, uh, or this period that, uh, in which we received more num larger numbers of agencies and all sectors of Saudi Arabia that started adopting technology. Now we reached about 75% of automation of uh, our organizations and we hope that we will reach more than 80 to 90 percent in the near future also we look at the reviewers and the community and we say that we need to have a new approach to qualify the li and licensing reviewers we sent a lot of invitations we communicated directly with many practitioners in the industries and in factories and oil and gas sectors in all sectors we asked them to be a part of our reviewers and we gave them a number of workshops in order to help them know the mechanisms of accreditation and evaluation to be members of our teams. And I commend a lot the work that was done in partnership with many agencies and stakeholders, starting with His Excellency Dr. Ahmed al fahed and his esteemed team for their active participation in building the accreditation and evaluation standards they were our partners since day one. And this development of the platforms was not in separation from the agencies. We had them uh, engaged with us and this development was according to what they desired and what they expected. Here is a brief look on one of the platforms, which is the uh, National Observatory or Al Marqab Al Watani. Uh, and we have now seven versions. Each version is related to the feedback of the training sectors, uh, whether medium or big or SMEs. And also we worked with the Ministry of Social Development and Labor, also uh, the Human Resources Development Fund, because HRDF wants this platform to be connected to the other platform related to the training situation in Saudi Arabia. We also wanted these uh, all of the stakeholders to have better uh, effectiveness. And during the coming two weeks, we will uh, launch the eighth version of this platform uh, based on the change we received in the feedback of the uh, em employers. employers. Uh, this is a link you can uh, follow to find uh, more information. If you, have any, if you have any questions as well, you will find the Q&A uh, the Q&A division in the website. You have three minutes. Okay. As for uh, the program accreditation system, we found that the best way to uh, do it is through, through working with the sector agencies and stakeholders. We talked to many ministries in Saudi Arabia who organize and uh, work in different industries in Saudi Arabia, and they were very interested in being a part of the team who will build the programming accreditation system and we will help them in terms of the technical issues related to these standards. But those agencies and uh, sectorial councils will work on the technical parts related to their own work, whether in telecommunication or other sectors. We also found that using technology may help and facilitate this work in partnership with them. Those agencies will have direct access to the platforms of the uh, corporation. Also, the subject matter experts will be uh, responsible for helping us a lot in terms of setting the requirements and the demands of their own sector in order to have the core of the skills that will be required for each learner or trainee. We also found that many of them are interested and we worked with them and soon we will train them on this field uh, in order for them to be fully ready. Today, I have my colleague, Dr. Abir. She uh, works with her team in order to develop the uh, new programming accreditation system. And we will work with other, all other uh, agencies like TVTC and the Ministry of 
human resources and uh, HRDF, in addition to many more of the agencies of the industrial section. What I want to say uh, at the, is that at the end of the day, we want it to be participatory process in partnership with the stakeholders, and this will help us achieve greater results. We look forward to more partnerships in Saudi Arabia as a factor of success. This success factor will help us uh, achieve our uh, goals and uh, tackle our responsibilities. The decision makers, the trainees, the parents, the students, all of those should be engaged. And up to now, our experience is very good, but I can say excellent with all of the people who, are, where, who we worked with. We look forward to receive the results of this um, work in the quarter, in the fourth quarter of 2020, and to start the new year. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed, for your presentation. Uh, it is a great effort that you are doing in the corporation and uh, in your center in this field. As you mentioned, it is very important to benefit from uh, what is happening. Uh, that there is a lot of digitalization automation happening now in Saudi Arabia. I have a, one question related to this huge change that is happening in the market. How do you deal with that situation and how uh, do you uh, tackle the new requirements and demands by the training corporation? How do you facilitate their work? I know that every, this will benefit everybody, but how do you deal with their demands? Uh, thank you for your question. We take their feedback and we put it in front of us as an investment, not as an in inspection. When we invest in the accreditation and evaluation process, we find a lot of developmental areas and improvement areas that needs to be worked on. Another thing that we connect the accreditation and evaluation process to the results and the outputs and the advantages that we have in Saudi Arabia, whether in terms of support, in terms of the act, uh, right to have access uh, or to many of the governmental uh, business opportunities. So this will have greater opportunities for the agencies, their representatives, and for all of us. This will be more beneficial than having pressure or putting pressure of inspection on them. We need them to work with us. Thank you very much. At the, con at the conclusion of these six presentations that were delivered, all of them were wonderful and i'd like to thank the speakers for uh committing to the time allocated for all of them